All right, at this point, I am ready to start doing some priming in the cockpit. And to do that, I'm going to turn to one of my favorites, which is Mr. Surfer 1500 Black. And I'm going to thin that with MLT to the point where when I run it up on the sides of the cup, it barely sticks. And that lets me know that that's thin enough for me. Uh, I like to shoot at about 23 to 25 PSI in thin layers and dry and slowly build it up. The only time I'll spray it wet is when I'm getting into a tight area and I want to make sure that I'm getting some good coverage without any dusting. So a little quick blast back here on the tail. As you can see it's nice and thin so it's not really building up fast. And that means I'm going to get a nice clean finish. The only place it'll get wet is when I'm down in these really tight areas. I'm not getting really full coverage on this first pass. It's about 50%. And then the next time I'll just, same thing, nice even movements, and slowly build it up. Almost like a robot on an assembly line. All right. dry oh. and start hitting everything with primer now where everything in here is so tight I want to make sure that it's kind of wet and when you see that glossiness that shows that paint's going a little bit wetter the primer this is what I want coverage in there and then on the back side as well And at this point, you're probably getting bored. I think you pretty much get the idea. All right, now that I'm getting ready to add some interior color here, I'm going to go for the main color that's going to be aircraft gray green by Mr. Color. But to get some different tones going in there, the first color I'm going to start with is to me is cockpit green, which is a little bit lighter than the Tamiya, or sorry, than the Mr. Color. It's oh. a little bit. Darker. So, my next step, 
is to set this lighter green for the base coat, the Tamiya cockpit green. And then I'm going to add some highlights and break up that tones with some black basing using the gray green IJ Imperial Japanese Navy, which is an off white green. So now that it's all mixed up the same way as before, so it's barely sticking to the airbrush, it's ready to start the base coats. The whole point of this first pit pass is I don't want full coverage. Just want like a cloudy effect. Alright, for the next layer of black basing, pre shading, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to use Tamiya's gray green. And to make this a little bit tighter, I'm going to pull the end off my airbrush. It's going to let me get very tight in. Now that I've got all the pre-shading slash tones going on, black basing with the greens, I'm going to come in with the final color, which is the Mr. Color Gray Green, and just slowly start building up the filter layer. Late War Aircraft and the RAF had a black upper half of the cockpit, so now that the green's in, I'm just going to tape this all off to mask it, and then come in probably with a rubber black. Alright, now that everything has been taped off, which I didn't really bother showing show you, just taping is taping, I'm ready to bring in the black for this area behind the seat and on the side walls in the Tempest. And Typhoon had that as well. And for that, I'm going to use some Tamiya Rubber Black. So I thought I was almost done all the painting and left the sidewalls black to do silver, but it turns out that Tempests had these tube structures were silver post-war. And in the Edward instructions, they call for it to be interior green, except referencing some photos, it looks like this top bar remained the RAF nightshade just to follow along with that same theme in the rest of the cockpit. So what I'm going to do here right quick before I cut this for the night is I'm going to come in here and just spray these lower bars with green and that'll be most of the base painting done for the cockpit and then I can come in with oils, highlights, all that fun stuff.
To pick out some of the details here in the cockpit to make them show up a little bit easier for painting, I'm just going to do some dry brushing. And to do dry brushing, I'm just going to take a little bit of paint on a flat, soft brush like this, unload it into some paper towel, and then if I wipe it on my finger, it's a little bit too much there, this should leave almost just a little bit of a shine, but nothing, no streaks or anything. So then what I'm going to do is take the sidewall here and I'll zoom in. Let's say the switch is here. And I'm just going to stick the brush in and gently hit those. And voila, a little bit of detail. Okay, so now that all the base colors are down, before I get into any weathering, I want to start painting some of the switches. There's an option to cut detail off and put decals on, but I don't like getting rid of 3D detail to replace it with 2D detail. So on this decal sheet here, for the switch bank under the left side of the canopy, you have red dots and then the selectors. I'm going to guess those are some type of arming switches. So I'm going to paint those and use this as a reference, but I'm also going to come in and do the console and get that started. So pretty straightforward. I use, don't use anything special for this. I use hot water. That way by the time I'm ready to do anything, it's cooled down a little bit. I'll put a little bit of Mr. Mark Setter down first, followed by Mr. Mark Softer. And these are cartograph printed decals, so there shouldn't be any issues touch wood, or it could turn into an absolute nightmare. So, the old cutters out into the water they go, nothing special, just a bowl my wife won't notice is missing. Let it sit in there for about 15 seconds. Until it slides around easily. Of course it flips upside down while it's in the tank. Okay, the numbers are all floating away, so we know this is ready to go on. Get the mark softer ready. And I don't like putting this stuff on top of clear coats because it tends to bead off and not sit 
where I want it. Whereas if I gently pack it in where it's supposed to go, the fluid is not going to go everywhere. And then I can use it to slide around the duckle. This all lined up. Feel like that's in there. And then come with the Q-tip and just suck out all that fluid, the excess fluid. Bam. Let that sit for a couple minutes and then I'll hit it with the softer, which will help it meld to all those surfaces. Right, next one, pretty straightforward. You can, this is the one thing about the Edward Weekend kits that I like, is this kit costs pretty much the same as an Airfix kit at the same scale. And my dogs are going nuts upstairs. Costs the same as an Airfix kit, but yes, you're not gonna have the perks like a mask or photo etch stuff, but really the decals and taking some time to make them look a little bit nicer putting some gloss into the dials. It's it's not the same, but you get enough detail that it looks pretty decent. And the puppy has made its way down here. No, this isn't Michael Vick's house. I'm not running a canine fight club. Okay, same thing again. This one might be a little bit more challenging. trying to roll on itself. And that sometimes is what will cause some silvering. Boom. So you're wondering in the background here, I have two dogs. One is, well they're both rescues. One is a lab and what's probably a mix of Collie because she's very intense with how she focuses on stuff especially playing or just getting in my wife's way while she's doing stuff. And the other one is also a rescue, and it's kind of funny. He looks like he is a corgi and border collie mix, and he's only about four months old right now, so him and the other dog are playing lots, all that fun stuff. But anyways, I'm rambling. There's two decals in. You don't need to see the do the third. Like I said, once these are all dry, I'll come in with Mr. Mark Softer. And, well, not while they're dry, when they're soft. Not soft. Oh, my God, I can't even talk more. When they are starting to dry a little bit, then I'll hit them with the softer. That way the two chemicals can work together. All right, now I'm gonna hit these little switches to the left of the cockpit. And to do that, I'm just gonna use some Citadel paint, Mephiston Red. I like this for just doing buttons, which is very high pigment paint. And usually I don't even really thin it. It's acrylic base, so it's easy to clean up. And the best part is because it's acrylic and everything else so far has been lacquer that if I make any mistakes, I can just come in and simply wipe it off. So a little button one. Button two. And I think you get the idea. All right, for the next step for weathering, I'm going to use some Abilene oils. And I don't want to use black because it's too stark. So for the leather on the seat, I'm going to use smoke, which is just a little bit of grayish color. I'm going to use that to blend for leather. And then dust and brown, I'm just going to use for breaking up the greens. And I'm going to turn the brown, shadow brown, into a wash. First thing I'm going to do is, using cardboard for my base, I'm just going to suck up a little bit of seed oil. Or sorry, yeah, seed oil that's in the paint, because you see this, what happens is that makes the oil paint dry glossy and makes it take longer to dry. So by putting it on cardboard, that is going to suck out most of that oil, most of that seed oil. 
and let it dry a little bit faster. The nice thing about oil paints is you don't need much. That's the shadow brown. And then the dust or buff, buff will work as well. Same thing, put this on cardboard, let it sit for a few minutes, suck out seed, seed oil, whatever you want to call it, some type of oil. And then for thinning it, to turn it into a wash, I've already loaded some fast drying thinner pulling faster and thinner into my dish and what I do is I'll put a little bit get this in the middle here a little bit of oil up on the side and then what I'll do is I'll start just touching it with the thinner and as soon as it starts to run a little bit see how it's starting to break up there then I will start using that as my wash All right, now to blend this little bit of oil in, I'm just gonna use a nice big flat brush. I'll dip it in thinner, pull a little bit of the excess out, and then just start tapping it. And if you wipe too much away, it's very easy to add more. I don't want too much thinner in the brush because then it just kind of floods everything out of the way. So you'll notice every so often I'll wipe the board, the bristle board, and that just pulls some of the thinner out. And then you'll notice that it's a little bit harder to blend the paints afterwards, which is what I want. And the whole idea here is just have a little bit of grime in the aircraft. Now for the floor here, I actually want to remove some of the oils from the footrests because there's too much contrast going on. So I'm going to wipe as much as I can out. That way you can still see the detail in there. See, you think a pilot with muddy flight boots, walking on the flight line, dirt, mud, that's all going to get tracked into the cockpit. And as much as a ground crew would be trying to keep that stuff clean, there's only so much you can do. If you ever look at the floor of your car in the winter time, you'll see you get the same idea. And again, when I put the pilot in here, a lot of this is going to be hidden, so I kind of want to do a makeup effect where there's a little bit of dirt and grime and stuff that'll show through. Normally I would really go to town on this but because the pilot's going to be in the way there's really no point. Alright now using some smoke oil, it's a slightly gray black tint, I'm going to start working on the leather of the seat and the point here is I want it to be 
slightly glossy black to pop more from the back here, which is just that flat rubber black. So to do so, take a little bit of thinner on my brush. Let's see if I can show this here. The thinner on the brush. Unload it. Unload the excess. Get it a little bit. Back off the extra. And then just start blushing this in. Taking this stiff brush, I'm just going to gently tap it to try to get a little bit of texture into the paint. Any other time, it's all about avoiding texture, but with leather, if you ever look at an old seat in a car, you'll usually see that it's rubbed and worn and tearing, stuff like that. Now with all the basic painting done in the cockpit, the last thing to do is come in and do my gauges. And to do this, I am simply going to use some Tamiya X22 and a brush and 100% without dilating anything, I am going to simply tap each gauge and this will give me a nice little patch of clear coat that when it dries will look like a glass of a cock gauge and you can use acrylic for this I've used gauzy uh, AK gauzy but I still like AK or sorry, I still like the Tamiya X22s. It gives me the same result every time. I'll just let this dry overnight and if need be add a second coat tomorrow. There we go. There we go and then I got a pin on the sidewall here. That would have been a tip. Almost knocked my glue over there. Which would have been about par when this stuff starts, it likes to pile on pretty quick. There we go. And then a little tip right here. I will take a moment here and apologize for not showing the process of painting the figure. I am not a figure painter. I haven't done very much of it. In fact, other than this pilot, all I've done before was paint some 148 Japanese pilots from the Zero kit I did, and that was just practice. Uh, I don't really have a technique I can show you or say this will work for you or this is what I'm doing. In fact, I had to strip the pilot four times and start again before I was happy with them. I ended up using a mix of acrylics and oils, and maybe once I start getting more confident with painting pilots, I'll show you how I do the figures. But for now, we'll just pretend it didn't exist. <laughs> so on that note, the fuselage tabs go together and I'm going to start filling some seams. 
And with the fuselage halves coming together, that's going to bring this episode to a close. I hope you're enjoying the new style of video I'm trying out. Maybe it's working for you. Maybe you like the more detail. Maybe you don't. If not, let me know in the comments below. And I'd especially like to thank my patrons for supporting me beyond YouTube and checking out things behind the scenes. 132 scale supporters get to see videos a week early with no ads. 148 supporters get to see them 24 hours early with no ads. And on top of that, you also get lots of pictures behind the scenes and blog posts and just some musings with what's going on at the bench. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook. And if you haven't already, please click subscribe and like the video. Make sure you've clicked the bell as well so you get all notifications when a new video has uploaded. I am the Model Guy, and I will see you for Episode 3 as paint starts on the fuselage.